let's talk about Blood Prison. So Blood Prison is in Mansfield. It's at the Ohio State Reformatory or the Mansfield Reformatory. Um, it is an old historic prison which is very notable around this area. They've shot movies like Shawshank Redemption there. They've shot other movies and they're very well known. They've been on ghost adventures and ghost hunters and all types of stuff for being very haunted. And it's a very, very cool landmark. So, Blood Prison, I would definitely label as a high tier haunt. Um, they are definitely one of those kind of like rock show type haunts, more in your face. Um, really cool theming. Uh, they definitely have some things they can improve on to really get them up to be like a master level haunt, but they are definitely nothing to shake or any like type of stick at. They are a high tier haunt. Price? Price is about an eight. I think for what you pay, especially with Touch Pass, the show that you get, the length, all the cool stuff you get to see, the fun you're going to have, the price definitely is worth it. Length. So the length, I think it's an eight. You're getting a good amount of haunt for what you're getting. Um, we went on a slow night, I think it was like a Sunday, and uh, we definitely were still there for just under an hour with barely any line, barely any type of like congestion throughout the haunt. We were still going through a lot. They take you up and down into the basements all around a good chunk of that prison. Theme. So theme I would give a six. That's more or less because it is a prison you're expecting to see kind of the Mansfield reformatory stuff and they do kind of stick to that but they do take you into different worlds they take you into like a chapel scene they take you into a uh, military base type of thing they take you into plane crashes all types of stuff and I would like to see more of a story they do have some icon characters like the warden's widow who's amazing um, and some like you know guards and flight attendants for the plane crash but I would love to see a story of what happened to that prison. Why is it blood prison? What's going on and why are we going through these scenes? How are we being transported and like really submerged us in that story? That would really bring theming up, especially outside where like the midway is or where the lines are. There's really not a lot going on. Maybe we were there on an off night, but we only saw the warden's widow for a little bit and some guards. But I was hoping to see a lot more. There's some food trucks that you'd see maybe at like a carnival, but there's like no entertainment, nothing going on, barely a lot of music, no atmosphere. And that's what you're hoping for to pump you up for a hunt, especially a hunt with this type of show inside. I would love to see more of a show outside. Um, and I know they can do a lot around there outside because of the incarceration festival, you see it. So why don't we put some more um, effort into the sets outside, that would really bring up some stuff going into the theming and what you can do for the experience on every given uh, weekend that you're there. Marketing, I would say is an eight. They are doing okay with marketing. I love what Blind7 Photography has done with their like videos and like their commercials and promos. There's a point in the haunt where you stop and you get to actually see that full video and it's phenomenal. Um, it's really, really cool. It's one of the best things I've seen in the haunt industry in the way of like, you know, it's like a prison riot going off and the, like the actual staging and the outfits and the characters you see in there. But also I only saw the Warden's Widow. I didn't really see any of those other creatures. Oh, those would be great line characters, great characters to see in like unused spots and stuff like that. And I get it, you know, staffing's really hard, especially post pandemic, but their marketing, I would love to see them bring more icon characters like that into their TikToks. Warden Widow does a lot on TikTok, but I'm not seeing much of a story or much going on with inside the prison, any other characters, stuff like that that's really getting us hyped and like going, oh, I gotta check that out. Really, right now, they're banking on the Warden's Widow being the big thing that's drawing people into this prison, and she's doing a lot to bring people there, and just the notoriety of Mansfield Reformatory is doing a lot, but I'd love to see them really play up some icon characters, some story, some more marketing based around, you know, like a theme and the story of what they can do at this prison. Actors. Actors, I would give a seven. Now, they do have some veteran actors and people like the Warden's Widow that kill it. She, you know, knows how to, you know, control every moment she's in. She has a scream to beat all screams. There's not many actors out in this haunt world or even scream queens in movies that can hit a scream the way she does. 
and she also knows how to present herself. The way she walks, she looks like she's gliding on air. The way she's just like a ghost in that prison, the way she stalks people, the way she looks, the way she just like presents her body movements and her body language. They're all just like, you know, whimsical and ghostly and they just are creepy with that costume and makeup. Now, if they were able to apply that across the board consistently through this, they would be doing a lot better. But there are some actors that were definitely out of their comfort zone, trying to find their, like, you know, confidence, that didn't know how to command a room or entertain a room, didn't um, have actors filling spots. I think that haunt probably could have done with, like, maybe 50 more actors to really bring it to the next level. That's not, that's not saying anything with like the amount of actors they were missing. They still put on a really good show. They're still a high tier haunt, but to see them as a master level haunt, a haunt that must see from around the world, that's gonna be something that they really need to put more actors in spaces, train those actors across the board, because right now it's just the veteran actors that are really delivering the show. Perhaps I'd give a seven as well. Um, now, there's a lot of props that were being used and they weren't believable. Um, there are a lot of actors that didn't know what to do with props. So I would say actor training again and uh, being able to teach people how to use props on a uh, more immersive basis and having props that are highly detailed uh, for those scenes and that immersiveness is really gonna take things uh, far away. We're getting into that a little bit more here in the next category. And that's rooms and sets. They had some really great sets, some really great rooms that were larger than life, really immersive. You looked around, you couldn't even tell there was a ceiling going on in there. You looked around and you were just transported to a different world. But then you had some props or you had some actors that weren't as well, you know, paid attention to on details or well prepared. It would suck you out of that a lot. So there was like this one area where they would lock you in like a cell almost. But then nothing happened in there. And then they just kind of opened it up and let you go. You know, if you're gonna lock us in cells, put us in some there with something we don't want to be in there with. Put us in there with like a horrible scene, a horrible prop, a horrible actor, something like that that we're like, oh no, I want out. So that I think could be definitely brought up a little bit. Uh, there is props where you could see the stands that they were on. Um, there's one in the clown area where I thought, oh cool, there's somebody up on the catwalk. And then I looked, I'm like, nah, it's a prop. And then when the prop activated and it went off, it just didn't hit. But if you would have used like cotton candy or like some type of like screen or something like that to cover the base of that prop, it would have definitely kept the like, you know, magic alive and kept the reality at bay. Uh, things like that were definitely bringing things down. They had a lot of props where I'm like, oh, yep, I saw that at Transworld, where there's definitely other haunts that you will buy props and then put a lot of work into them, decorating them to make them immersive for the scene that they're being put in. Um, not saying that they don't have great prop usage in a lot of those scenes, but there are definitely moments where I was being taken out of the show. Like for instance, every once in a while, you'd hit these little plastic chains that weren't really making a a purpose where they were like you know if you're gonna have a prop make it have a purpose make it empower an actor or make it lead your eye line somewhere that like you want them to look at something these really didn't serve a purpose other than being kind of annoying use a heavier built chain or heavier material something like that these are the little things that are keeping this haunt from being a masterful haunt and you know taking you out of the experience scary I would say it's about a seven on the scare factor um, that's because it's just scary at that prison to begin with. But like the cells that you're in, um, like, you know, the things that you walk by and stuff, they're just gonna be creepy in general. Now, the reason why it's not up there more is because again, like I said, they were lacking on actors. They were like misusing opportunities in some of these rooms. There's this whole section where you walk down a corridor of cells, and I think it's solitary, um, where it's all blacked out but there wasn't enough people down there. There wasn't anything going on during that part of the haunt. And it really just killed the show, it killed the momentum. And if I had my way, I would have put actors down there because a lot of the other sets and props could have done with maybe one or two actors and had some more down in the basement where this scene was. Cause like it's a pitch black hallway. My cat's coming to say hi, uh, but it's a pitch black hallway. And you know, having something at the bottom of that hallway that you do not want to walk to is going to do wonders on setting a mood down there. 
and then having, you know, actors hiding in the cell and coming from every direction and pulling you in or putting you up against the wall is going to really amplify that down there and send him running down the hallway. Having sliders and sparkers down there and stuff like that. You already have music going, make it an assault on your senses. Make it extreme as hell down in those parts. That's really going to bring your show up. It's really going to be a good punch to the gut at that point where you need it in the show. Fun time. I would say it was a nine on the fun scale uh, with the people I met in line, the, the stuff that did impress me, their sets, the stuff that I just wasn't prepared for. I thought it was going to be a lot shorter. I didn't think they put that much time into the sets. They did do well. Um, just the way the warden's widow with the touch passes, she grabbed me by the neck and you know, like while I was walking up the stairs to get in the haunt and like it threw me off. It was a good scare. It hurt my neck. A lot of the things in there uh, definitely surprised me and I had a great time. So all in all, I would say it's a worthwhile haunt, something you definitely want to check out this year. They're doing wonders on um, like, you know, where they used to be. Uh, they are definitely going places. I think if they can get their actors up to snuff, recruit more, place more people in rooms and work on that attention to detail, they would definitely gum up a category and be a destination in one of the top haunts in the nation.